Um, dear friends, thank you very much for inviting me to today's conference on science, technology, innovation, and social responsibility. And thank you particularly to CERN and to the World Academy of Arts and Science for putting our agenda, uh, on our agenda the important question of how we can generate knowledge and innovation to the benefit of human development in a socially responsible way. History shows, I don't need to tell you that, but history shows that science has generated many ideas and discoveries that could be used to advance the development or to, harm, or to do harm if it's misused, or indeed if used according to specs sometimes. Think of the advancements in nuclear physics, which allowed for the invention of the atomic bomb that can destroy life on an unprecedented scale, and at the same time, nuclear medicine has allowed important advances in cancer therapy. Think of the internet, and in particular the World Wide Web invented right here at CERN, which has fundamentally revolutionized the way we communicate and access information, creating unprecedented global business opportunities and bringing education and learning to the most remote areas. At the same time, it has opened up new issues on cybersecurity and the loss of privacy that we are all grappling with right now. Think about drones that can be used as a weapons of war, but also how they can be used to explore the dimension of a disaster, an earthquake, a flood in areas not accessible to humans. Putting science, technology and innovation to the benefit of development needs functioning governance structures, both nationally and internationally. Governance structures provide the legal and political framework as well as a conducive environment that promote or hinder innovation and research. Policy is also important in order to market the innovative product so that the population at large can benefit from it. Governance structures finally have to ensure the positive impact of innovation while avoiding its potential negative side effects. Good ideas and technology sometimes may be out there for a while before they are put to use in response to a need. International policymakers therefore have an important role in pointing scientists to the problems that need solutions, linking science, technology and innovation to the development challenges that need to be addressed. Science and international policymaking can and must form a powerful partnership in addressing the challenges put forward in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. One of its goals, Goal 17, specifically calls for an enhanced north-south, <coughs> south-south and triangular regional and international cooperation on access to science, technology and innovation. And if I may add to what Ralph just said about what needs to be done in order to implement um, one of the sort of cornerstones of our ability and indeed our, uh, uh, and, um, our, what is in really needed in order for us to have even half a chance of getting to where we need to get is a much, much greater um, collaborative um, uh, and integrated effort um, to, to an extent that we haven't quite seen before. We all have to be this in together um, if we're going to make it. And here, of course, um, science and, the pol and policy makers uh, play a particularly important role. Standing on the threshold of the implementation phase of uh, the 2030 Agenda, we need new and more revolutionary inventions at the service of society in order to deliver results. We have to harness science, innovation and technology through cooperative partnerships across countries and organizations. The integration of the world of science and the world of politics and diplomacy has to be taken to a new level, as I just said. The creation of the United Nations Scientific Advisory Board in 2013 underlines the importance that our Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, attaches to science. And I just repeat what Ralph just said, that uh, Professor Giannotti is a member of that board, which already organically links us to CERN um, in, in more ways than one. Um, this board helps the United Nations strengthen the link between science and policy, and it will also continue to improve our understanding of our planetary boundaries, of tipping points, and environmental thresholds. And it will further strengthen evidence-based policy making. In that context, let me congratulate you, Rolf, for the uh, announcement yesterday of your membership in the EU scientific advisory mechanism. Scientifically proven facts are a good basis for political agreements. They can provide a neutral backdrop in a politicized environment. The United Nations itself is engaged in generating the evidence that contributes to dip diplomatic agreements. The UN University is conducting crucial research and training that will be key in implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And that work is complemented by targeted research 
by bodies such as the UN Research Institute for Social Development, the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, and the United Nations Institute for Disarmament Research, all of them based here in Geneva. The latter is a good example of how excellent research can generate ideas that are desperately needed to move the disarmament agenda forward. I should say the stalled disarmament agenda forward. Ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations goes to great length to reinforce science, technology and innovation for social development. And Geneva in particular is particularly well placed to leverage scientific diplomacy, being a hub of the international policy community and international science, also attracting international thought leaders such as the World Academy of Art and Science. So I invite you to make good use of today's opportunity to exchange about these issues in order to advance this important agenda, and I wish you all a very fruitful discussion. Thank you.